So today's goal is to go over 2020 exam sample question for AP Calculus AB. So College Board released this exam on their website. I'm going to go step by step and explain my thought process while I'm solving this practice exam. So here's our question one. Part A. Justify why there must be at least one time t for 0.3 to 2.8 at which the derivative of velocity, which is also known as the acceleration of particles, is equal to 0 meters per hour square. Part A is referring to a Rolle's theorem. So Rolle's theorem is... Rolle's theorem has three parts. First part being it has to be continuous from the interval of the time that is given to you, which in this case is 0.3 to 2.8. It also needs to be differentiable within the same range. And in our case, the third condition will be the velocity at 0.3 has to equal to the velocity at 2.8. So the first two conditions have already met because of the given statement. It says that the velocity of particle p is moving along the x-axis and is given by the differential function. So something that is differentiable is always continuous. So that means this was given to us. And now we just have to check the third condition, which is velocity at 0.3. We could look at the table to figure that out. That comes out to be 55. Same thing for 2.8. Velocity at 2.8 was 55. So we could see that they are equal to each other. So the most important the, the conclusion is since we know that velocity at 0.3 is equal to velocity at 2.8, Rolle's theorem. implies that there is at least one point again we don't know what that point is x equal to c well in this case it should be t equal to c t time is equal to c between point 0.3 to 2.8 such that the velocity, the derivative of velocity, is equal to zero. And there's your part one. Part B, use a trapezoidal sum with the three subintervals, 0 to 0 0.3, 0 0.3 to 1.7, and 1.7 to 2.8 to approximate the value of the integral of velocity from 0 to 2.8. So we're trying to approximate the integral of a velocity using trapezoidal. Um, in this case, we're going to try to break them out into three sub intervals, whatever is given to us. So it's one half times the height. The height in this case is the difference between the subintervals, so 0.3 minus 0, times f of 0 plus f of 0.3. Well, technically, again, not f of 0, it should be velocity of 0 plus velocity of 0.3. plus the second trapezoid will be 1 half. Once again, the difference between the subinterval was 1.7 minus 0.3. And the height was velocity of 0.3 plus velocity of 1.7. And here's your second. And the last one is 1 half, 2.8,
minus 1.7 times the velocity at 1.7 plus velocity at 2.8. And if you calculate this, you should get 0.3. Velocity is 0, 0. Velocity 0 0.3 is 55, so it will come out to be 55. 1.5 times 1.7 minus 1.3. Uh, 1.7 minus 0.3 is 1.4. That's 55. That's negative 29. So that should come out to be 26. And the last one is 2.8 minus 1.7. Once again, 1.7 is negative 229. 2.8 is 55, so that will come out to be 26 once again. If you multiply and add them together, your answer should come out to be 40.75. Or again, if you use a, if you use a fraction, it should come out to be 163 over 4. Part C. If integral of f of x dx from negative 6 to 5 is 7, find the value of integral of f of x from negative 6 to negative 2. So, part C. We are trying to figure out integral of this is our goal, but what's given to us is from negative 65 of f of x is equal to 7, but we know that negative 6 to negative 5 will be negative 6 to negative 2 of f of x dx plus negative 2 to 5 f of x dx. Now we know this is equal to 7 because that's given to us. Our goal is to figure out this value. So we're going to subtract to figure out the answer. And the integral from negative 2 to 5 of f of x dx could be calculated using the graph that is provided. So it would be negative 6 to 5 f of x dx equal to um, minus integral of negative 2 to 5 f of x dx is equal to negative 6 to negative 2 f of x dx. And we've calculated this to be 7 or is given to us by 7. Again, keep in mind what this means. Integral means that is the area. So we're going to try to find the area against the x-axis. And I'm going to try to break it down a little bit more by looking at the graph. This could be broken down to negative 2 to 4. 0 f of x plus 0 to 1 f of x dx plus 1 to 2 and finally 2 to 5 f of x dx and this will equal to integral negative 6 to the negative 2 dx and that's what we wanted to calculate the area of the area for negative 2 to 0 th the interval will be 0 from 0 to 1 will also come out to be 0 From 1 to 2, that's a trapezoid. 
or you could think of it as a square and you have a triangle on top of it it comes out to be two and the last one you could think of it as a square subtracting the set um, the quarter of a circle so the entire square in this case is nine minus the quarter of a circle with a radius of three will be 9 pi over 4. Now, calculate this value, you will get negative 4 plus 9 pi over 4 as the answer to part C. Part D is pretty straightforward. It says to evaluate the integral from 3 to 5, 2 times the derivative of f of x plus 4 dx. So let's rewrite that first. This would be 2 times the integral of 3 to 5 f prime dx plus integral of 3 to 5 4 dx. Apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, we know the integral and derivative. If you integrate the derivative, it comes out to be f of x. So we have f of x, and you're calculating this from 5 to 3. And integral of 4 is 4x. Once again, calculating this from 5 to 3. So 2 times f of 5 minus f of 3 plus 20 minus 12 2 times f of 5 if you look back to the graph you have 0 f of 3 is given to us it was 3 minus radical 5 plus 8 so this will become 2 times negative 3 plus radical 5 plus 8 and which comes out to be negative 6 plus 2 radical 5 plus 8 which is same thing as 2 plus 2 radical 5 as the answer. Part E the function g is given by g of x equal to the integral of two, negative 2 to x f of t dt. Find the absolute maximum value of g on the interval from negative 2 to 5. So um, to make it a little bit easier to see, we're going to take the derivative of g of x because again, in order to find the maximum point or the minimum point, which is known as extrema, you have to find the critical point. So taking the derivative of g means that you have to take a derivative to the integral. And that's the second fundamental theorem of calculus. You're taking the derivative of an integral. So this will come out to be f of x. Now to calculate the critical value, your f g prime has to equal to zero, which means that your f of x also has to equal to 0. Looking back to graph, this happens twice at x equal to negative 1 and x equal to 1. Keep in mind we're looking for absolute maximum, which means it has to go from positive slope to negative slope. In our, so in, in our graph, it has to go from positive value to the negative value which only happens at once which is negative one now because we're looking for absolute maximum just make sure you're testing out three possibility points you have three possible points which is known as your endpoints so we have three possible points which is negative two negative one and five 
So let's try to find out what g of negative 2 is. g of negative 2 is integral of negative 2 to negative 2, f of t dt, which comes out to be 0. g of negative 1, negative 2 to negative 1, f of t dt. Again, if you look back, trying to calculate the area under the curve from negative 2 to negative 1, you'll find that it comes out to be 1 half. And finally, the last one, g of 5, integral of negative 2 to 5, f of t dt will equal to, and I believe we calculated this. This will come out to be 11 minus 9 pi over 4. Since this value is the highest, g of 5 is the absolute maximum. F want us to find the limit as x approaches 1 from 10 to the x power minus 3 times the derivative of x minus f of x minus the arc tangent of x. So again, the first rule about limit is you want to do the direct substitution. So I'm going to try to substitute it in. Um, 10 to the 1 power is 10. 3 times the derivative at 1 over f of 1 minus the arc tangent of 1. Derivative at 1 means that you're looking at the slope of the tangent line. Uh, you're given a linear function, so calculating the slope will help us to find out the slope of the tangent line. So slope at 1 is 2, so it's 10 minus 3 times 2. f of 1 is 1. Arc tangent of 1 is pi over 4. So we have 10 minus 6 over 1 minus pi over 4, which is 4 minus 4 minus pi over 4, which comes out to be 16 over 4 minus pi as our answer. Last part, g. Suppose that g of x is equal to integral of f of t from negative 2 to x. Is the rate of change in g increasing or decreasing at t equal to 1? So they want us to find the derivative is increasing or decreasing. So similar concept, we could say that derivative of g is equal to f of x at 1 we can see that f of 1 comes out to be 1, which means it's a positive value. So that means rate of change at g will be increasing. And you could say it's because f of x is greater than 0. It's on the upper half of the x-axis. So we just went over 2020 AP Calculus AB, practice exam question number one. And if you have any other questions or concerns about the answers, please leave a comment below.